Good evening, everybody. I'm attorney Chris DeBerry, and welcome to another episode of Legal Ease. That is my legal talk show where I discuss subjects to you that are important of legal relevance and try to answer uh, your questions. So this evening, we're going to talk about a subject that's very, very important and touches the lives of every person, at least in the state of Florida, who drives an automobile. Today, I'm going to talk about your no-fault benefits on your insurance policy. Now, I've touched on this in the past briefly during uh, a presentation I did some weeks ago. However, I need to touch on it in a little more detail because I've had questions lately coming from clients and friends and people who are curious, and there are definitely some misconceptions uh, that are going on uh, within the state and probably other states that follow a no-fault system as well that probably could use some straightening out. But this is meant to apply to Florida law. And if you like what you hear today, please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Legalese, or like, share, or comment below. I appreciate your feedback, and uh, you know any, any suggestions you want to make are, are, are fantastic. But let's get down to it. So what are your no-fault benefits, or your PIP benefits, as they're sometimes called? And PIP is just short for personal injury protection. So basically, any time you take out a policy of automobile uh, insurance in Florida. Now, this doesn't apply to motorcycles, but it applies to cars and trucks and so forth. You must, per Florida statute 627-736, carry a minimal amount of personal injury protection or no-fault benefits. So anytime you hear the term no-fault in the state of Florida, they're either talking about divorce or they're talking about your no-fault benefits, but we're talking about the no-fault benefits today. So your policy is required per Florida statute to carry at least a minimum of $10,000 in personal injury protection benefits, which you contract for and which pay on your behalf. Uh, now, you're also required to carry $10,000 of property damage liability, and the combination of these two coverages, the, the PIP benefits and the property damage, are the statutory coverages, meaning it's written into the law that you have to have at least these two. Now, unfortunately, Florida does not yet recognize a model where mandatory bodily injury insurance is required to be on your insurance policies. But we're hoping that in the near future, we'll be able to uh, make that a reality. However, for now, all you technically need to drive and what is full coverage is PIP and property damage. And believe me, they may call it full coverage. Some insurance brokers may want to sell it to you as full coverage, but it is not full coverage. But that is a conversation for a different day as far as other coverages you should have that will protect you. But what is PIP exactly? Well, in its wisdom, approximately 30 years ago, the Florida legislature decided that in order for people to fulfill their legal duty after being injured, and any person who's injured only has a duty to make themselves well and not get worse. So if you've been involved in an accident, or you or somebody you care about or you love has been involved in an accident, the only obligation the law really places on you is to make yourself better, not let yourself get worse, uh, seeking appropriate diagnosis and treatment for your injuries. Uh, and uh, you don't want to become worse or let the injuries get worse because then you become a burden on society, and that would be a bad thing. So the law provided this um, this thing called PIP, or personal injury protection. And what it does is it provides you $10,000 of benefits, which will pay your medical bills or your loss wages. Your medical bills will be paid at 80%. Your loss wages will be paid at 60%, or a combination of the two, up to your limit of $10,000. And of course, minus your deductible. So if you have a $10,000 in PIP coming to you, you uh, have a deductible of say $500, then PIP will pay $9,500 uh, and it'll pay 80% of your medical bills and 60% of lost wages. As long as these bills are for medical treatment that is reasonable in cost, medically necessary and related to a particular motor vehicle accident. So that is basically what PIP is and what it does. Uh, once again, it's a statutory coverage, so it's mandatory that you carry it. Now, there are a couple of misconceptions that people have. 
people think that if they're injured in an accident, then the other driver is supposed to pay my bills. Now, while we may rely upon another driver's bodily injury policy at some point to reimburse you for outstanding medical bills, loss of enjoyment of life and things of that sort, your insurance company is responsible for paying your first $10,000 of your medical bills uh, at 80% and 60% of your lost wages. Uh, you can even have an insurance adjuster reserve your uh, your PIP strictly for medical and not pay lost wages, or you can ask the adjuster to, uh, and your attorney will do this if you request it, reserve for lost wages only and not pay or no fault. But either way, those benefits are available for you and they're provided by statute and you don't need to pay them back. PIP is provided to you because you've contracted for it, you paid premiums for it, and you do not have to pay it back. So that's a good thing. Another thing, too, if you make a PIP claim, your insurance company is not allowed to cancel your policy. And they're also not allowed to raise your rate because of making a PIP claim. And there's a statute right on point that says that they'd be in trouble if they did that. Now, that's not to say that an insurance company can at a later time decide not to renew you as a customer. That is well within their underwriting uh, purview. And they may or may not do that. But uh, obviously, um, you know, that's something that could happen, but isn't prohibited just because you made a PIP claim. They could still do that, not rewrite you. However, they can't take away your coverage and they can't raise your rate because you made a PIP claim. And that's very, very important. Now, PIP has made some important changes over the years. It used to be in the beginning that you had this full $10,000 of benefits that would help you to get quick, uh, immediate medical care. And, and that is logical because if you had to rely upon the other driver's insurance to hand over uh, their policy money to pay your medical bills, you may be waiting a little while because they may challenge on liability, they may challenge on causation for your injuries, relatedness of your injuries. But if you have $10,000 under your own policy, then you have money to pay for your medical bills right away. And that's very, very important. So uh, back in the old days, you were given $10,000 and you could treat with any physician you wanted to. You could treat with an acupuncturist, a, a medical doctor, a chiropractor, a witch doctor, if that's your thing. Um, and that's what it used to be and traditionally always was. Unfortunately, uh, when 2012 uh, rolled around, things changed a little bit. Uh, they no longer made $10,000 an amount of money you'd automatically get under PIP. Instead, under the new statute that was passed in 2012, you are only allowed $2,500 in benefits. And that's an amazing reduction in the amount of benefits you're entitled to. You're given 25% of what you traditionally would be entitled to. Uh, and, and you'd only be permitted to uh, receive $2,500 and no more unless you can demonstrate that you've suffered from an emergency medical condition or an EMC. This is a whole new thing that they added to PIP and really doesn't make a lot of sense when you consider what PIP benefits were really uh, invented for in the first place, for that immediate care that you would need. Um, and, and in addition to limiting your $2,500, uh, uh, the uh, legislature also eliminated certain types of therapy from the statutory scheme of reimbursement under PIP. They no longer reimburse for acupuncture or uh, massage. So those are two things that are very useful types of care that people receive uh, or need to receive if they've been involved in accidents where they've suffered soft tissue injury and so forth. However, those things are no longer reimbursable uh, under their traditional guise of uh, acupuncture and uh, massage. So that's another thing the legislature did, as well as limiting your benefits. So you have $2,500 coming to you. A physician needs to uh, diagnose you with an emergency medical condition. So what is an emergency medical condition? An emergency medical condition is defined as a medical condition uh, manifesting itself by acute symptoms of sufficient severity, which may include severe pain, uh, such that the absence of immediate medical attention would reasonably be expected to result in any of the following. Serious jeopardy to the patient's health, serious impairment of body function, and that is an emergency medical condition. That is how it's defined in the statute just like that. So while it was never ever a requirement in the past, all you needed to show in the past to have your 
medical bills paid by your PIP at 80% was that the bills were reasonable in nature, that the treatment was medically necessary and related to the accident. Well, now the legislature has added this whole other requirement of the emergency medical condition, which patients and physicians have largely been able to address and get around. So for the most part, people seem to be benefiting from the full complement of their PIP. Now, why uh, was PIP created the way it was created? Well, when they uh, enacted it, uh, it was decided that people needed to have this benefit so that their bills could be addressed right away without having to wait so they could be made better. However, the legislature didn't just give that away for free. No, no. The legislature made a trade. So in an automobile accident case, if a person is injured, they have the benefit of their PIP. However, if they decide, they and perhaps their attorney decide, that they want to pursue a certain kind of damage called a non-economic damage, then they need to demonstrate that the patient suffered a permanent injury within a reasonable degree of medical probability. Those are the statutory buzzwords. So PIP was enacted and, and given as a benefit to the Florida uh, citizens of Florida. However, uh, because they have PIP, now they have to demonstrate a permanent injury to pursue non-economic damages. And non-economic damages are things they could be like pain and suffering, loss of enjoyment of life or life's activities, mental anguish, pre-accident terror. These are things that only a jury can put a dollar value on, and you can only pursue them in Florida in an automobile case, not a premises liability case, but only in an automobile case if you can demonstrate a permanent injury within a reasonable degree of medical probability. Now, you can always pursue your economic damages no matter what your past lost wages, your future loss of earning capacity, your uh, past medical bills, your future uh, medical needs. Those are things you can always pursue whether you have a permanent injury or not. However, under the scheme of PIP statutory reimbursement, in order to pursue the non-economic stuff, you have to be able to demonstrate a permanent injury or your case can be, uh, for, for non-economic damages, can be thrown out uh, as a matter of law. Um, so PIP continues to change and evolve but despite a tremendous amount of pressure to uh, get rid of it uh, over many, many years, and, and I've been practicing in this area for close to 20 years. I've litigated PIP claims for, for probably close to about 18 years of 20 years. Uh, and I've seen it change from one thing to another. And um, it, even, it even sunsetted in 2007, uh, which meant it terminated on its own terms, however, only to be re uh, re resurrected in 2008. So PIP is probably gonna be with us for a long time. But just remember that if you've been involved in a motor vehicle accident, you have this benefit. So don't be afraid to treat. In fact, the law sort of requires that you seek out treatment for diagnosing and treating injuries that you may receive because of the accident. And of course, if you've been involved in an accident, there are gonna be plenty of questions, plenty of things you're gonna to need to know about. So please call an attorney, call me. Uh, the law offices of Christopher DeBarry at 727. 656-7852. And I can answer all of your questions and uh, really, really uh, get you on a good road toward recovery and uh, you know, possibly a successful legal claim if that is what you decide to do. Uh, once again, folks, thank you very much for tuning in tonight. Uh, please um, uh, like, share, or uh, comment below. Uh, your comments are always appreciated. And uh, thank you very much for tuning in. And please tune in again next week where we're going to talk a little bit about your UM benefits, uninsured motorist. But thank you very much and have a good evening.